I'm Naisha McCauley and you're watching AccessTV.org. Good morning and welcome to the challenge. Uh, as always, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for another opportunity and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in. Uh, the challenge comes to you to uh, bring you the very best of grassroots TV. Uh, we try to make certain that the message to the community comes from those who live in the community. We're here this morning with uh, a very dear friend, longtime friend and mentor, uh, Mr. Joseph Harrington. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, uh, it's, Russell. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Joe. Uh, uh, I'm excited to have you on the show this morning. Uh, I know uh, I've known you for uh, at least 25 or more years, and uh, quite frankly, uh, you have... Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, represented the, the very best of our community. Uh, and I'm delighted to have you this morning. Well, I'm flattered to be here. Well, great. Hope I have done some good in this community. Well, if I, if I had uh, my way, I would certainly uh, give an award to you. Uh, your stick to if you will, uh, has meant a great deal to uh, quite a few of us. The, you're an entrepreneur. Uh, you were one of those guys who uh, I personally looked to uh, who uh, sort of uh, did as best he could to do it his way. Uh, and you chose uh, the, uh, uh, the arena uh, of insurance to do that in. And uh, quite frankly, it was something that I, I embraced as well and uh, uh, think that it's a great, great uh, bastion for entrepreneurship even now. Uh, wouldn't you agree? Yes, it is. Uh, however, uh, times have changed dramatically over the last 35, 40 years. Sure. It, uh, of course, 35, 40 years ago, we didn't have quotes on TV. Right. As yeah. we do now, or uh, quotes on the internet. Right. And so some of that has become now far more prevalent than it was back then. Yeah, and it's and presumptuous we didn't too. Have, we didn't have computers yeah, uh, yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we first used to try to rate, for example, an automobile policy, we had big book like manuals yeah. and we had to flip through the various sections right. to put together the the kind of coverage that we w were tr prepared to offer you. Sure. So uh, we used calculators and <laughs> <laughs> did the and did the calculations <laughs> there mm -hmm. and moreover the uh, Companies themselves did not have the kind of behind-the-scenes technology that they now have, right. of course. Right. And we didn't have those, for example, huge databases where people could, their, their driving records could be checked Immediately. Instant right. instantaneously. Yeah. Sure, of course, of and course. So, yeah. Now all that is possible and more. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, uh, there is a presumption that uh, the, for the vast majority of people that the only thing that matters is cost and that uh, understanding what coverages are and what kinds of things are covered uh, <laughs> with policies seems to be uh, missing in the equation. And uh, they've, they've kind of replaced us, uh, the agent, if you will, with, with computers. Uh, but I think the, as far as entrepreneurship goes, 
it is still a great opportunity uh, if, uh, in fact, uh, it is something, if entrepreneurship is something that you uh, intend to pursue. Exactly. However, you need uh, capital and you need quality appointments by quality companies. Right. And that is now uh, pretty difficult for someone yes. just started, trying to start out. In, well, in it, was, it was difficult back then as yeah, well. Exactly. I mean, getting a, a, an appointment by uh, a standard or a preferred carrier uh, was uh, difficult. The very, uh, one of the most difficult things that anyone could do, exactly. uh, especially for uh, somebody who, who had the markets that you and I had, yes, exactly. you know, trying to find coverage for people in the inner cities and in the urban areas. It was a very difficult thing. They knew exactly where we were uh -huh. and uh, where most of our clientele was going to be sure. from. And yes, that was frankly a, a great deal of redlining. Yeah. Uh, they did that by not so overtly doing it, but by simply withholding appointments in our community. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yet some of us did reasonably well and uh, well, you saved, had to, saved our people yeah. as much money as we possibly could at every, every turn. You had to have insurance. There was no way you could do without it. Mm -hmm. but, but if I can digress for just a minute, um, mm -hmm. there were a number of other things, obviously, uh, that, that uh, because of that entrepreneurship, you were allowed to do or had the flexibility or the latitude uh, to do uh, within the community. I know uh, one of the things were, uh, was that you were the commander of uh, the American Legion uh, post in, uh, um, in the Hartford area for at least one term, you said. And yes. uh, that means that you were a veteran and, uh, you know, that means that you led um, if you will, uh, that organization, and uh, wanted to get your take on, on you know, uh, what's happening now with Veterans Affairs, and uh, you know, there seems to be, uh, you know, this great deal of interest now, in what's happening with veterans. Is that is that something that has always been the case, or is this new? Is this stuff new, or I I use the VA. Uh, often and so far as I am concerned the VA here in Connecticut must be light years ahead of some of the other uh, VA uh -huh. uh, situations for example the Phoenix situation that it's caused all this uh, commotion has it seems to me um, almost nothing in common with what my experience is here in Connecticut. Really? No. Wow. Nothing at all. <laughs> oh, wow. So all of these waiting times, all of this, uh, the, these appointments that uh, are, aren't uh, uh, scheduled or, or, you know, the ability to see doctors, I don't, you've never had those experiences. I've, I've never had those kinds of experiences. And... Um, not only that, when if you one if a veteran has an appointment, is scheduled for an appointment, and you don't make that appointment, mm -hmm. they are usually following up to see what happened and how soon can we reschedule you for that. Wow! They send us notices by mail also, as well as the telephone follow up. So. I I just don't get that sense that they are, so to speak, trying to... Dysfunctional they're, they're exactly. as an organization. No. Really? I don't. And well, I know with this veteran's card in my pocket, if I'm in North Carolina or Texas... Right. Um, they can access my records once they have my 
data mm -hmm. off my card mm -hmm. from anywhere mm -hmm. in, in the system. Mm -hmm. And that is, it seems to me, uh, a very vital um, attribute to have here uh, since Americans are so mobile, even right. as veterans. Of course, of course. Yeah. We move around all the time. Yes. Yeah. So, and we never know where an accident might occur or whatever. So, I'm happy with the kind of service I'm getting here. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's important uh, because, you know, so many of us get our uh, our news, if you will, from these 24-hour news cycles, and, uh, you know, they seem to claim to have uh, their hands on the pulse of, of the community, if you will. And uh, what we're doing here at Access TV uh, is, obviously, we, we believe that there's another perspective. And we believe that in some cases, you know, things are being left out. Exactly. And they're, they're or ignored. Or ignored. Or exactly. deliberately ignored, if you exactly. will. And so we, we're not uh, trying to refute necessarily what, what, what others may say, uh, but we, what we are, uh, what we do think that it's, it's important uh, that uh, others know that uh, that's not necessarily uh, you know, all of the story, or the story is not quite complete. That if there you is will. a different perspective. Oh, without, without a doubt. So without a doubt. I subscribe and, to that. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and I don't know that they're trying to, to, to paint, uh, paint a broad brush, but it seems that they are. Um, and, and I know that there's always, you know, wiggle room, if you will, because mm -hmm. you're never saying, well, everybody's having the same experience. But it certainly seemed to suggest to me uh, that politics uh, and the politics of the day, uh, you know, are sort of dictating uh, what the news will, will, will become, if you will, or what you'll hear in terms of news. W would you agree with that? Are you sure? Uh, uh, what goes to the top? If it, if it bleeds, it leads. Uh, and so much of uh, what's on TV today is, to me, just not anything that I'm interested in seeing. Uh, um, and certainly, certain networks are beyond the pale uh, from my perspective. Uh, I don't watch them. I don't l listen to the personalities there. Uh, In fact, I think many of them are nothing but, uh, well, go where, go where the money is. Yeah, talking and, heads. And, they and Talking heads. They, they will say whatever exactly. someone pays them to say, exactly. if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, I remember uh, working in your shop and occasionally we would turn on Rush Limbaugh. Uh, you remember? <laughs> of course I did. And, Rush and, was considered and, and, and one of the I most turned, dangerous. And then I turned turned him off <laughs> because I, he's one of the most dangerous men in, in America. From my perspective. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and when I hear of these um, devotees to his methodology, I, I just shake my head. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? It is. It, and and it's the following is huge. And it, it seems to me that they just want to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, create something that uh, is counter to uh, something that is is either good or right or or better than uh, what it is that they have. They, they just want that counter. They want to uh, act contra contrary to uh, they know that, others. that conflict um, builds ratings yeah uh, if it isn't sensationalized or ballyhooed and blown way out of proportion right um, in speaking in hyperbolic terms right uh, 
thank you, I just like the facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I am, uh, uh, you know, uh, hoping uh, that uh, as we continue to uh, build this platform that uh, uh, others can uh, can know that the information is coming from uh, reliable sources and that uh, the stuff that uh, uh, we've experienced, uh, uh, the things that we, we know uh, are reliable and that they are uh, coming from a place where uh, of truth and compassion for um, uh, the next person, the next generation and those sort of things. We've got to take a break right here, uh, Joe, and, uh, uh, but we're going to have you back. Right. And uh, uh, we want to talk some more about what's happening in Hartford right. and Hartford politics. And we want to talk about things that are going on locally in the community and how you feel about those things. All uh, right. That'll be fine. Great. We've been talking to Joe Harrington. Uh, we're going to talk to Joe Harrington in, in one of the other sessions coming up real soon. Uh, stay tuned. Remember, uh, be blessed. Hi, and welcome to AccessTV.org. I'm your host from Shape the Next Generation, Naima Jackson. Welcome to AccessTV.org. We're your host, Naima Jackson. And I'm Elijah Williams. Thank you for tuning in to Shape in the Next Generation. Today's special guest is Ms. Vicki Gallen Clark. Ms. Vicki will stop by on the show to talk about her role in the Blue Hill Civic Association. Now, if you haven't heard about Blue Hill Civic Association, you should definitely look into it. It's located on Asylum. Now, if you don't know anything about Blue Hills, you should know that Blue Hill Civic Association, they will definitely help you get a step forward in your future. They'll help you figure out what you want to be in the future because they definitely helped me. I figured out what I want my career to be, I figured out what college I want to go to, and I figured out what I want to major in. Blue Hills helped me because they helped me learn how to write a resume, a cover letter, they prepared me for an interview to get a job. Blue Hills Civic Association is definitely the perfect program for our youth today. Now thank you for joining us on AccessTV.org. I like AccessTV.org because they offer us highlights on our local community that you don't get from Channel 3 or Fox News. They also have us gave us highlights from sports like track and field. So thank you so much for joining us. And all the youth out there, you should definitely join us at Access TV and definitely check out Blue Hill Civic Association because it will help you, it will motivate you to get out there, look into our programs, and it will help you shape your future. Good morning and welcome to the challenge. Again, as always, uh, we'd like to first thank God for the opportunity and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in. Uh, we've asked uh, Joe Harrington to stick around uh, a little while longer with us to, uh, and talk to us about uh, Hartford and community politics, if you will. Uh, his take on uh, the community uh, you know, I know that um, uh, a lot of us uh, who've known Joe for a lot of years know that Joe was kind of recruited uh, to come here. Uh, many years ago, uh, he, he helped lead the Ebony Men's uh, uh, League, if you will. And at that time, uh, it was, uh, you know, hopefully galvanizing and organizing the community. Uh, in a way in which it could become more self-sufficient. Uh, is that not the mission, or wasn't that not the mission then, that, Joe, and shouldn't that be the mission now? That is That was our primary mission. It was to work with minority businesses throughout the state and help them 
with business packages, mm -hmm. help them arrange for funding, mm -hmm. um, because you, it's very difficult to be in business with no capital. Absolutely. And you need working capital and you need, of course, uh, depending on the type of business, you often need significant uh, outlays for machinery and uh, all of that was our mission. Sure. I had on my staff, and there were seven of us, accountants and marketing people. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, <laughs> uh, President Nixon decided back then to uh, cut back on the minority business programs. Right. And um, so we were funded primarily by the U.S. Department of Commerce through what was then called the Office of Minority Business Enterprise, mm. OMBI. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after that occurred, um, the funding was lost. We then uh, just shrunk as an organization. Mm. We didn't have the funds to hire staff to pay me and my other right, right. staff personnel. So, well, um, well it, it's, 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 it, I can understand the need for that kind of an apparatus within the, in our community, uh, specifically geared towards our community. It seems now that that's part of, a fu of the function of the state, the, the Department of Economic and Community Development, uh, it's sort of taking on that task, but it's not specifically meant for, uh, you know, the black community or uh, the urban community, if you will. And my, my, uh, I, my sense is that it's probably needed now more than ever uh, with the, you know, uh, the way the economy is and with the new, new technology. It seems to me that uh, uh, the way of the future, uh, our ability to create a way for ourselves, uh, uh, it, it, that is critical for us. It is, of course, more important today than probably it's ever been, especially with the rate of technological innovation that's going on. and. It just seems to me that that spirit of entrepreneurship is not as agile today as it was back then. Mm, mm. You know, we're coming after, out of the 60s right. and, and the uh, issues that emanated from that period were um, issues that dealing with self-realization and hiring your own people, uh, creating jobs mm -hmm. for some of them and all of that is obviously important for self-sufficiency in one's community. So would you say that we have become too dependent upon the system? I mean, has politics led us there? Politics has led us to the point in our community where we are almost, you know, at least in big percentages relying heavily upon the system to provide for us. Well, the system has often been so difficult to penetrate uh, that uh, I think many would-be uh, entrepreneurs have just Fell by the wayside? Given, given up. Uh, right. Climbing mountain after mountain after mountain. Right. And still seeming to have shackles around your but ankles. The, but the private sector is, uh, you know, they are, they are, you know, going through the roof. I mean, the, the, the top Fortune 100 companies in America had over a trillion dollars in profit. Sure. 
And, uh, you know, the largest uh, uh, Fortune 100 company now is a retailer, mm -hmm. Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I'm saying, you know, mm -hmm. that to say, you know, I mean, uh, it, it would seem to me that, um, you know, we need to understand how the private sector works uh, and, and, and how it, what makes it work and to spend more time focusing on that rather than politics. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know if I'd say I agree, but I think they have to be paralleled. That is to say, I think we need the political aspects because, you know, the laws are made and the rules and regulations are made politically. Right. So then I think we ought to also, though, be aware that there are indications of, of uh, concern over our own viability in business. And that has a lot to do with not only management capability, but funding capability, access to funds, as we mentioned earlier, and a, a competent workforce. So it's all related. Yeah, but the politics of it, it seems to me, uh, in our community, if you will, uh, it just hasn't worked. I mean, the years of us being in political positions, uh, you know, political positions to, that make decisions that would hopefully spur uh, or spawn opportunities for us uh, hasn't really netted us very much at all. Well, I I can say that uh, we have to have that political in, input, but at the same time, I don't want to knock our politicians too much because they are not there in sufficient quantity to make sure that their aspirations can be fulfilled. And, and you have to work, I remember <laughs> uh, Senator who fought so valiantly uh, around here, Wilbur Smith. Sure. And uh, <laughs> he was all, often at odds with nearly everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, not, not just his adversaries, but even with those yeah, who, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> who agreed with him. So yeah. these are the kind of uh, outspoken people who uh, might have been more um, bombastic than some of us would have thought necessary, but at the same time, those tactics did help open some doors. Mm -hmm. uh, may he rest in peace. So, from your perspective, Joe, at this point, what, what's, what's priority for our community? Give us your list of priorities. Give me at least your top two or top three priorities for, for our community. I believe very strongly that we need to have better educated young men. Mm. It's distressing to me that so many of them drop out of school, right. don't even get a high school diploma, right. and uh, I'm blessed in that sense that I had two sons, they both graduated from Hartford Public, they both went on to college, sure. they both graduated from college. All right, right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, my oldest son passed with an illness he'd never heard of until he called me and said, Dad, <laughs> I've just been diagnosed with something called scleroderma. You ever heard of that, Dad? No. Wow. <laughs> and I said, Herman, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about the characteristics of the right. illness. So, to make a long story short, it is a very um, difficult almost always fatal with males. Right, right. And he fit the profile perfectly. 
Uh, one out of four people who have it are males, and uh, it's an autoimmune disease that, like lupus and oh, wow. uh, muscular dystrophy and right, so right. many other right. things that don't. That's, that's another one of those issues of, you know, as far as our community is concerned, you know, those kinds of diseases that are, you know, more specific to, sure. to us and more attributable to us than uh, other, you know, ethnic groups. ethnic groups. Yeah, we, that should be one of those, is that one of those priorities too? Mm -hmm. uh, we should add those, yeah, I think. Exactly, of course, yeah. healthcare is very important. Yeah. Um, but I think it's almost axiomatic that you gotta go get a pretty good education in America to have any future. Yeah. Uh, any future of uh, that's possible, possibly uh, with any good quality of life. If exactly, you know. yeah, uh, that quality of life yeah. is is going to be wholly almost dependent on what we are producing here mm -hmm. uh, for the future. And as the world becomes more acclimated to technology, right? Um, look at just, just the wondrous things that, when I was a boy, we couldn't even think about. <laughs> oh, I'm, and I'm looking at you know now they've got in the field of medicine robotics. Exactly. Yeah, those kinds of things that can perform procedures, you know, uh, that men would not even dream of doing. Uh, in, in the past. Yes, they have, so. uh, for example, now uh, a, a tiny camera about the size of a capsule that they, they can, you, one can swallow. Yeah. And that allows them to see them to look around your entire body. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, it's uh, remarkable. That's, was, of course, when you're in uh, rural areas especially, mm -hmm. but the urban areas are becoming less and less hospitable uh, to those who don't have certain skills. Mm. Anything about Hartford over the last, uh, you know, few years, if you will, that is particularly disturbing, I'm, you know, outside the fact, you know, uh, your personal experiences. Well, but I, I just shudder to think that a number of us are now almost afraid to go out at night. Wow. <laughs> and, and it disturbs me that even certain churches in certain communities need to have Security guards. Security guards outside yeah. while the people are inside That's trying to worship yeah. to protect their cars. Yeah. It's, it's it's just the way the world is today in so many places in, yeah. in the urban areas. Yeah. It actually almost seems to be kind of like the things that you see in other countries mm -hmm. and not necessarily in America. Uh, you know, and in our neighborhoods here in, in America, uh, you know, protecting uh, our neighborhoods, uh, um, it seems to be um, much more uh, on the minds and hearts of people than ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Joe, it's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure. We've come up on that time. I know it's quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a delight to have you, man. It's a delight to see you. I'm happy to you have know? been here. Yeah, man, and we certainly wish you well. Thank you. Uh, in, in all of your other endeavors. And the same to you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, as always, remember, be blessed.